Well, over the past several months, my church has seen an explosion in the number of views and the reach that we're getting across all of our social media platforms. And if I had to attribute it to one primary thing, it's the fact that we have started taking measuring our social media success very seriously. But that's something I see so many churches missing. We don't know what to measure and we don't know how to keep track of it. So to help, I've put together a social media scorecard and I wanna share it with you. Well, hey guys, I'm Thomas here from ReachRight. We put out new content like this multiple times every week. So if you find this video helpful, I bet you'll find a lot of our other content helpful. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It'll mean a lot to me. One of my favorite quotes of all time is from Pastor Rick Warren. And he says that you can only manage what you measure. And if our assignment is to manage our church's social media, it's so important that we actually measure how it's performing. But in my experience, the vast majority of churches aren't really keeping an eye on how their social media profiles are performing on a regular basis. And because of that, we're often not making wise decisions on the kinds of things that we post and therefore not really seeing the growth that we're hoping for on social media. It's one thing to cross your fingers and hope that maybe one of your posts will go viral, but if we actually start to measure what works and what doesn't, we can actually make corrections along the way. And at my church, it's led to an enormous increase in our results. We started measuring our results here at ReachRight a few years ago and saw great results with it. And so I wanted to bring that over to our church. And several months ago, when I came on as the executive pastor, we implemented a social media scorecard that has helped us really track how we're performing. And it's been amazing to see the results. I'm gonna hop over to the computer so I can show you the exact scorecard that we use at my church. And I actually made it into a template. So at the end of this video, you can download it and use the scorecard for your church totally free of charge. Let's head over to the computer. All right, guys, so here's the exact social media scorecard that my church is using on a monthly basis. There's actually two variations of it. And so for smaller churches to medium-sized churches, I recommend the monthly scorecard. That's what my church uses. We put in new data on a monthly basis so we can kind of keep track of things that way. But I've also built out a weekly variation of it too. So you can, on every Monday of the week, put in your increases and the things that you've done on social media right on there. So this is there for you, use whichever one you see fit. I'm gonna spend most of the time in this video using this sample scorecard. It just has some dummy data in there. Um, I imported some of our data and then spread it out a little bit to make it look a little more full so you can see how it works. At the top here, you'll see the different things that we're measuring. So there are four social media platforms that I chose and we've done this from research. The platforms that churches are most likely to use are the ones that we chose. So we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have TikTok, and we have YouTube. Uh, so those four platforms are great. If you wanna duplicate some of these columns, you can feel free to do that if you're using LinkedIn or Twitter or X or uh, Snapchat or something like that aggressively at your church. But I think for most churches, these will be the primary platforms. At least they're the ones that we recommend. And the one thing they all have in common is they all have some form of short form video. So they're really great that way. So on each one of them, we're measuring a couple of things. Instagram, we're measuring the reach each month and then the number of followers gained. Same thing for Facebook, reach and followers gained. On TikTok, it's reach and followers gained. And on YouTube, it's a little bit different. We do views, which is basically the same as reach. The watch time, so how long did people watch your content for, and the subscribers gained. So those are the primary things that we're measuring. Uh, and we found that these are the most important things for you to measure. Are there other things you could be looking at, like the amount of time that somebody spends on your videos on other platforms or other vanity metrics that you'll see on TikTok? Sure, and if you wanna do that, feel free to add a column to this. I think it's something you can knock out in about five to 10 minutes every week or month, depending on how you're measuring it at your church. And so I wanted to give you a quick once over so you could see exactly where to find all of this data. So the first place you'll go to is the Meta Business Suite. And that's where we're gonna find information for both the Instagram reach and followers and the Facebook reach and followers. So we'll hop over there first. Um, you'll see that I am logged in here on the reach right accounts. So that's what we're looking at. Um, and I'm sure our team here will blur out anything that needs blurring on this. Uh, but right now we're looking at our Instagram reach 
on our Reach account. So what you'll do is when you first get on there, you'll set it for the month or the week in question. You can use this uh, tab right here on the top to do that. And the first piece of data we're looking for is the Instagram Reach. So here on Instagram at Reach Right, we had 239.6K. So I'll take that number here and pop it into our August number. So it's 239600, uh, that's the number that we have in there. And then also in the Meta Business Suite, you'll find the number of follows here. Uh, so you'll see that we grew um, 238 new follows that we got here on Instagram last month. So I'll go ahead and pop that number in here too. So we gained 238. Now you'll notice that we actually have some of these color coding here. It's just so you can kind of spot anomalies. So obviously 239,000 is much higher than 24,000 and the other numbers on here. So it goes bright green. So you can see when maybe something's going viral. Uh, for the next one, for Facebook, it's actually at the same place. You can actually just pull this up by changing from Instagram to Facebook when you're logged into your manager there. So uh, as far as our Facebook reach, we had 184.4 thousand reach last month. So we'll go ahead and pop that in, 184400. We'll put in that number there. And then the number of new followers was in there as well. We had 50 follows that happened this last month on Facebook. Uh, so we have that data in here. We'll put that in and we have that. Next, uh, the TikTok reach, you're gonna go into your TikTok business suite. Uh, so that's what that's called. I have ours pulled up here so we can take a look at it. Uh, and up at the top here, you'll be able to set your date range for whatever you're doing. So if you're doing a weekly measurement, you'll just put it for that week. In this case, I'm measuring August 1st through August 31st. So we'll go ahead and hit that update button. It'll pull up our numbers. And right at the beginning, we see our number of video views or our reach that was on there. So there's two numbers you could measure. This is the number of different people that you're reaching. This is the number of total views that you had. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in that number. And we usually just just use round numbers when you get up to these kinds of things. So it's 70,000. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that for TikTok reach. You'll pop that in. And then also in there, you'll see the number of new followers that we gained. There's a couple of things you can measure here. I choose to measure the net growth, which is new followers minus lost followers. Uh, but interesting uh, numbers to see there when you take a look at the number of lost followers that you have. So, but for this month, we're just gonna put in the 33 because that was the net gain. So we'll pop that in, new gain of 33. All right, so finally YouTube, where you're gonna find this is in your YouTube analytics. Uh, so you'll go into the YouTube studio, uh, which is on your YouTube channel. You'll find a link down at the bottom left to YouTube studio. You'll go into analytics and that's where you're gonna find all of the data that we need. And it's really right at your fingertips. Up at the top, you'll change it for the date range you want. Usually it has the last few months on there. So in this case, I'll just do August. We'll pop that in there and we'll see that we had a total of 60,000.3 views. So we'll put in that. 60300, zero, zero, zero. and then we added a total of 770 subscribers. So we'll pop that in. Oh, I skipped watch time, but we'll come back to that. And then finally, the YouTube watch time that we had was a total of 3.0K, so 3,000 hours. Again, I usually just use the round number. It looks like it's 29. 53, 2,953 hours, but you know, just for simplicity's sake, use the numbers that they give you there. So we'll call that there 3,000 hours. Great. Then you have it. You have all of that data in for the month of August. And then you can take a look and say, hey, we really did something good, you know, back in this month because you can see the data and how it's reflecting that you had a lot more views or a lot more reach. You gained a lot of followers. It allows you to kind of measure what you're doing and what's working on your social media accounts. At my church, we started doing this several months ago and immediately it helped us to make some analytical decisions on 
what kind of content we should be posting. What kind of reels should we be making from our sermons? And we've been able to double down on some of that kind of content. And even more helpful, we've been able to scratch a lot of the content that didn't get us any real results. So this is something that I've found to be really helpful. I'm gonna leave a link for you down in the description here that shows you exactly how you can download this. When you do, you can make a copy of this exact spreadsheet and then you can have it for your church. Feel free to use either the monthly or the weekly scorecard. Both of those will work fine. I would say for most churches, again, the monthly scorecard is gonna make more sense unless you have someone dedicated to this. I know for ReachRight, we do a measurement every single week with our social media team just to kind of keep a pulse on things. But for the average church, especially if you're working with volunteers, it makes sense to probably just measure this monthly. But as you can see, it only takes a few minutes and when you start to measure it, then you can manage it and then you'll see some growth. Investing in your social media like this is such an enormous opportunity for your church, and I hope you're able to take advantage of it. And I actually spent some time just recently ranking all of the different church marketing opportunities that churches have. I made a video all about it where we put together an entire tier list of the best and the worst church marketing ideas that are out there. You absolutely need to watch that video next.